If nothing is certain, then anything is possible. If anything is possible, this certainly is. If nothing is certain, then anything is possible. If anything is possible, this certainly is. My name is Mark Brown. Welcome to my paranormal reality. This episode, Death Cab for Cutie, or My Wife's View of a Death Angel, occurred August 2008. My brother always was the cute one. He was eight years younger than me, and always stylish. He always had girls gushing over him. Of this, of course, I was constantly envious. It isn't something that guys talk about especially not brothers, but for sure, he was the cutie. We had recently taken a motorcycle trip to Niagara Falls. It turned out to be the last time that I would spend any serious quality time with my brother. Our dad and his girlfriend, our aunt and uncle, my wife, myself, and my brother, all were saddled up on our bikes. Our dad, uncle, and their respective others had already ridden from Alabama to Michigan, we were joining them on the trip from Michigan to Niagara through Canada. After staying a couple of nights, my brother, my wife, and I went back home as the others continued down through New York, Pennsylvania, and back to Alabama. It was a 10-day bike trip for them and a 3-day run for us, and it was wonderful for everyone involved. While in Niagara, we did all the touristy bit. My brother had been there with our parents when he was 12, before the divorce. I was at college, so didn't join them. At the time, he hadn't been allowed to go to some of the spots that he wanted to see. Now, as a 33-year-old, he could do as he wished, and so dragged us along. One stop that he wanted to make was the Hard Rock Cafe, and we all agreed that it would be a fun place for dinner. The food was less than we had hoped for but the 80s rock videos playing in the background kept us entertained. We saw a couple of different Blues Travelers videos, but for the most part paid little attention. My wife and I, however, both tuned into one song as it was playing and were immediately drawn to it. We watched the whole video and were captivated by the song. It was familiar and yet at the same time completely unknown and had an extremely strong pull. My brother was familiar with the song but didn't know the band. When the video ended I had a chance to write down the name of the group but not the song or the album. Death Cab for Cutie was what I had written on the paper and then I stuck it in my pocket. Our relatives continued their journey and my brother, wife, and I finished ours. Within days of getting home from our trip I went and got all of the albums by Death Cab for Cutie. As I had first thought them to be a one-hit wonder, I figured that they would only be one or two albums, and the name of the song I was looking for wouldn't be important. I was surprised, however, to find quite a discography. As I started to listen to each of them, looking for the song that we had heard, I found it and another song on the album, Plans. I shared the song with my wife, and we were both infected by them. I often listen to music while I work, and for the next two weeks I listen to Death Cab for Cutie exclusively. For a large extent of that time, I focused on the first two songs of Plans. I could not get them out of my head. For the first half dozen attempts to listening to the album, I didn't make it past track three before I would jump back and listen to the first two over again. I never really paid it any thought. Then again, who really does notice the small things like the music that they are listening to? I get some obsessive compulsive moments sometimes, so I thought little of it. Those don't typically stretch into weeks, but then again, it was just a couple of songs that I really enjoyed. 
The next time that we saw my brother was two weeks after our trip. My mom was having a family reunion. Rather than have it at her house, as she often does, this was a little larger party, so she had it at a park nearby. The park is next to the public beach and also next to the local cemetery. Our family lived in a small community, so it was pretty much the town cemetery. My brother went for a walk and visited the grave of his love, whom he had lost in a car accident almost two years prior. A little while later, he came back and joined the party. He was torn, as he was excited about all the things that were going on and happening in his life, but still felt the loss of his loved one. That night, as we drove from my mom's house to ours, my wife went white and cried out, Oh my God. When I asked what was wrong, she said that as we were driving, she saw a group of four people talking outside of a building as they were about to go inside. The problem was that one of the men looked exactly like Marty her ex-husband's dead brother. Her and Marty had been close friends, and this man looked directly at her as we drove past. It gave her a chill that she could not shake for days. A week later, we got the call. My mother's party was the last time we saw my brother alive. After the funeral, when I got back to work, I pulled up my music playlist and was astonished. I had only then realized that from the time that I'd been in that hard rock cafe, sitting across from my soon-to-be-dead cutie of a brother, that I'd been obsessed with a band called Death Cap for Cutie. For the first time, I actually paid attention to the songs that I'd been playing over and over again. And I broke down in tears. The first song is a beautiful song, and I highly recommend it. I had always felt the urge to sing along with the chorus, but have never quite gotten the first word. It was something will fill your heart through a pinhole. As I looked up the lyrics on the internet, I stopped and cried. Sorrow fills your heart through a pinhole. Slowly rising, your love is going to drown. I then saw the second song, the one that had attracted my wife and I to the band in the first place. The one that was playing while I sat with my brother in that hard rock cafe. The name of the song, Soul Meets Body. The song starts out with the following lyrics. I want to live where soul meets body and let the sun wrap its arms around me. And bathe my skin in water, cool and cleansing. And feel, feel what it's like to be new. My favorite portion of the song at the time, which I would crank up the volume on it every time I got to that part, was this. I do believe it's true that there are roads left in both of our shoes. If the silence takes you, then I hope it takes me too. Which of course led to the chorus that I'd never seem to notice. Where soul meets body. Where soul meets body. Where soul meets body. This was almost enough to make my rational mind start wondering if there was something beyond coincidence in action here. And I might have been able to do it. I might have been able to convince myself. But a couple of days after this realization, I had an additional twist as my wife and I watched TV. 
The day before the funeral, my wife and I were looking for a song that my brother had requested in his will that be played for the funeral. He had demanded, don't play anything sad. If you have to play something, play Witchy Tai Toe by Everything is Everything. Wanting to accommodate his wishes, we went out to the local music shop and proceeded on to several shops before finding out that he had requested one of the single most hard-to-find pieces of music you could ask for. We were becoming frustrated, as we had been away from the funeral home far longer than we had expected, away from my mom and the rest of the family. I was getting stressed because we could not find the song or even the group. As we stood in the music section of this particular store, wondering what to do, we heard a song come on the common speakers in the area, advertising a new album. I was further frustrated because I loved the sound of the song and wanted to buy it immediately, but couldn't figure out who it was, and I had to get back to the funeral home for visitation. While we never found Witchy Tai Toe at the music shops we scoured that day, we were able to buy it on the internet that evening and play it at my brother's funeral as he had requested. As far as the song that haunted me in that last music store, I eventually found it. A few nights after the funeral, my wife and I were watching TV when an advertisement came on for a new album. I knew immediately that this was the song I had heard being advertised earlier. Whose new album was it? Who else? Death Cab for Cutie. So what do I think of it all? I know that there are a lot of people out there that will immediately write this off. They'll say, it's a nice story, and it's certainly endearing, it's sentimental. But what is it more than some coincidences? So you like to song a couple of songs by a band. So the name of the band just happened to have the word death. And you correlate it to cutie because of your brother being cute. It's all pattern matching. And it's all things that every human mind does. We wrap things up. We compartmentalize. We rationalize. We put them all together. But at the same time, While literally being a scientist at heart, I am a computer scientist, have been from the time I went into the seventh grade and saw computers, before that even when 1970 something and the first arcade games came out. I'm a little older, but old enough to remember those times but still young at heart and that's the thing I think I'm still young enough at heart that I'm willing to believe that there's a little magic in the universe I could believe that it's nothing but cold hard statistics formulas facts and it is simply that once the grand unified theory is found that everything will have been predictable and we'll see that these were purely coincidences that somehow reverberated and stacked on top of each other but I have a hard time with that because I've still seen too many other things too many other circumstances, too many other things that just don't seem to fit with a 
single grand unified theory being able to predict these things happening be it that there is actually true free will and whether there's question of what really is the definition of energy especially with life forms and the ultimate energy of life those are obviously questions that are a little beyond quote quote my pay scale but still I just can't write some of these things off I'll leave you with this six months maybe eight I don't recall exactly I know it was in the spring or early summer of the following year 2009 my wife and I were standing outside we were stressed out because we were still trying to figure out how to handle the affairs of my brother and as happens with couples when they're stressed out they sometimes argue we did and just as we were starting to argue outside we stopped because someone nearby had been in kind of a neighborhood uh, through beyond our backyard they turned up their car radio because a song had come on that they really like and decided to crank it I don't know who they were I don't even know where their car was because all of a sudden floating across the sky on this beautiful summer day with soul meets body we stopped arguing we cried and we agreed that there are some things that are bigger than both of us I hope you liked tonight's episode. You can find more about this in the book, My Paranormal Reality, at the website, myparanormalreality.com. If you're not sure how to spell it, just look at the name of the podcast. It's right there. <laughs> There's also a link on the podcast information details. Uh, we're setting up, going to have uh, T-shirts, merch, and all the standard. But, of course, you can buy the book. Or you can subscribe to this podcast or share it with other people. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>